Yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to the channel. An intermediate lesson today, we're going to be going through how to put 3D fire in any scene and how to make it any colour you want. Disclaimer, I'm going to be moving a lot quicker in this episode. I've done a beginner's version, so if you are a beginner, don't watch this one first. Go watch the other one. It's on my channel from about a week or two ago. Same 3D fire concept, so yeah. Don't miss out any gaps in your knowledge. Go learn the basics and let's go. Okay guys, here's the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into your clip. As you can see, I've got mine here. Then you're going to add a 3D camera tracker just by going on the tab here. Now I've got mine open. It's already tracked as you can see. All I've done is clicked on render track points, gone down to advanced and clicked on detailed analysis. Okay, just like this. Then wait for that to finish and then let's move on. So now if you're in a situation where you can't touch any of these track points, all you got to do is click the render tracks points on and off again. Then they should be fine. So now you're going to click on a certain part where you think it looks all right. Then go on to create solid in camera. Then size your solid up so you know what you're looking at. Then just tilt it around so you can see it better. Now play for your clip and just make sure that the track is looking okay. Now to me, that track point's all right, so let's move on. You're not going to delete this. All you're going to do is hide it and then you're going to go on to P just so you can see these coordinates, okay? Now you're going to bring in your fire assets. I forgot to mention this at the start, so I'm just going to show you how to do it before I even start anyway. Basically, how you make all of this blue is you're going to add a deep glow to start with because the deep glow makes the fire look much more realistic. Then you're going to add a tritone effect. Then choose your mid-tone and then just put it to whatever color you like. Then from there, it will just fix up just how it needs to be. And that is how you get blue fire on all of your effects. So you just add these two to whatever fire layer you have. So now let's get started on how to do the effect. Next step, turn off the render track points. Now, as you can see, I brought in one of the fire effects from the Google Drive down below. I mean, it's looking very funny right now. So let's fix that. We've got a camera here. So all you're going to do is click 3D layer and you'll automatically see it's starting to move around like crazy. Should I tell you why this is? Because it's not got the correct Z value, okay? It's too it's too uh, close to the camera. Hence the reason it's moving so fast. Because how parallaxes work, if it's further away from the camera, it's moving less. If it's closer to the camera, it's moving more. So now I'm going to drop a little trick for you guys. You see this little track solid Z point? You're going to copy that by pressing Control C and paste it to your top layer. Now all you're going to do is size it up so you can see it. And then you're going to have a tracked point. Now I want this to be up in the front in the corner. So all I'm going to do is scale it up a bit. And now because it's actually in front, let me just scale up a bit more, maybe to 3K. All I'm going to do is keep altering it like this. But I'm actually going to bring mine, the Z value, a bit more forward because it's closer to the camera. That's the effect we're going for. So I ended up adjusting it a bit more, but this is how it's looking now. All right, guys, now into the next step, intermediates. You know what to do. So basically, I've used the same Z value as the track solid and then brought it forward or backwards depending on where it needs to be. So now I've added a wall fire just onto that corner and then I've added one up here and then that should have been it. So I've added three different fires here on top, a wall fire at the top, a wall fire at the side there and also a wall fire there. However, I've made this one closer to the start of the clip. So this whole clip, I've just cut it down to our clip length. You lot do the same. For the back one, I've made it a lot more towards the beginning. So for one, they don't look the same. And two, it just gives off that it's starting, okay? If you're not on an intermediate level yet, then first of all, this video isn't for you. The one that is for you is another one I made maybe a week or two ago. Just go check it out on my channel. That will go through in much more depth on how to do this effect. So now this is what we got, but... Fire does not work like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to rotate out your layer. So because the fire for me is starting here, I'm going to rotate out the car and I'm going to rotate out him. So I've done my rotate scopes and dragged it to the top, but now it's looking a bit silly. I mean, what? <laughs> what? What was happening here? These are fine. All you're going to do is you're going to get your bottom layer here, which is the fire that's supposed to be in front, if I can find it, and just drag it above the clip because it's supposed to be in front, right? So the next step for you lot to do is because remember this is the fire at the front, but everything underneath this rotoscope, which are these three fire layers here at the back, basically all you're going to do is copy your camera layer, bring it above the track solid, and then highlight all three of all how many you're using that are underneath the rotor layer. Right click, go into pre-compose, and then just add it as, I don't know, under fire. Okay, so now 
that maintains all the tracking data, but everything's much needed to look at now. You can delete your track solid now, you no longer need it. So now that's that, but we need to work on something else now. So you're gonna go onto your Roto Scope player, go down and add Crates Light Wrap. I've adjusted the effects here just to make it a little bit different. You can copy it if you want, but it's gonna be different. So now all you need to do is go onto the background layer, click on none and just put on your under fire pre-composition. So that way it will use all three of these and not just one of them because you can only add one thing in here. So now, as you can see, you may not be able to notice it very heavily. This isn't supposed to be a realistic effect, but it just makes it look so much better. I've basically added a glow to the inside layer of this. So if I turn it off, you'll see what I mean. So if we look at this here, then I turn off the crates light wrap, you can see the difference, okay? There's only one more thing I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go onto my bottom layer, then I'm gonna add a Lumetri color. Then I'm gonna, basically all I've done is I've done an exposure keyframe. So I put the exposure at the start to zero and then brought it down to minus 1.3. And then I've copied that over to my rotoscope player, as you can see, just like this. The only reason I've done this was to make the fire the bigger focus of the visual. Now this isn't supposed to be something mega realistic. It's just something that's really cool to look at, especially in a music video. So I've added the exposure keyframes to just make the fire the focus of the video, if that makes sense. And yeah, that's it. Here is the full resolution version. Let's have a look. That's another intermediate tutorial wrapped. Hope you lot enjoyed it. And more importantly, like, comment and subscribe. I'll be grinding my life out for you guys, dropping all the sorts that I use. So enough talk. Have a good day or night. And yeah, I'll chat to you later.